on this edition of CAPS 13 News. A new statewide weapons policy draws Pittsburgh State's attention. And Freeman introduces a sports medicine center to campus. Plus, a day in the life of the Pittsburgh State homecoming king. All that and more coming up on CAPS 13 News. Thanks for joining us for this edition of CAPS 13 News. I'm Ed Caffrey. And I'm Alexis Frank. PSU campus spreads awareness of domestic abuse issues. But first, fall is upon us. Halloween is around the corner and many trees seem to have already been decorated. However, the numerous webs seen on trees around campus have nothing to do with the holiday. The silky displays are created from this time of year from a caterpillar appropriately named the fall webworm. Heavy rains last spring during their egg laying season has caused an increase in the amount of webworms seen this autumn. According to the Kansas State Extension Office, while the worms feed on the leaves of the trees where they spin their webs, they don't cause any long-term damage. Most of, the webs are in the pro most of the worms are in the process of falling from the trees where they build cocoons under fallen leaves. In the spring, they'll reappear as white moss and start the cycle all over again. Joint venture from different campus ministries held a barbecue on campus Wednesday night. The cookout gave the students a chance to share some fun, food, and fellowship. The event brought together multiple campus ministry groups to give students a chance to get together for games, conversation, and of course, food. Students from campus ministries crew, along with four other ministries, took part in the gathering. Pitt State student Katie McGill, who is a member of multiple ministry groups, was one of the event organizers. And six organizations are advertised tonight, so... Um, yeah, so we just got together and it's just like a cookout um, and just hanging out with people and having fun and kind of to show Pitt State that all Christians are unified. In, uh. The event organizer said they hope to have more cooperative gatherings throughout the year. It's Domestic Violence Awareness Month at PSU and Students for, Viol Students for Violence Prevention is doing its part to make a stand against violence. Students for Violence Prevention, in coordination with the Safe House Crisis Center, will host a candlelight vigil tonight at 6 p.m. in Gorilla Village. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and one in three women and one in four men have been victims of some sort of physical violence by an intimate partner within their lifetime. The vigil will provide an opportunity for the campus and community to come together in order to honor those who've lost their lives, offer support to survivors of abuse, and take a stand against domestic violence. For more information, please contact Allie Smith, Coordinator of Violence and Prevention and Victim Advocacy at the Campus Activity Center. An action of a new statewide policy is catching the attention of many Pittsburgh State students. CAPS 13's Trey Brown has more. As most students that attend Pittsburgh State University know, having weapons on campus and inside buildings is prohibited. The signs on the entrances to buildings state just that. The university's current possession of a weapons policy says that the campus shall be weapons free. Basically, um, the concealed carry law in Kansas was passed in 2013 and it allowed for a four year exemption for uh, regents institutions to uh, allow them to not allow concealed carry on university campuses. Uh, however, that uh, expires in 2017 and so now we are in the process of determining what that means for us as far as uh, what policies and procedures and preparations need to be done before uh, that goes into effect to make us uh, able to still maintain the safety and security of everyone here on campus. The University Police are working together with Crawford County Law Enforcement, the Board of Regents, and other universities in Kansas on policy issues as far as maintaining any restrictions on concealed carry. Um, and through working with the Docking Institute, we've been creating a survey that we're going to administer to our students that go on campus and to faculty that go on campus um, in regards of their opinion on what do they think about the or what do they think about the new law going into effect? Are they comfortable with people carrying guns on campus? Is it going to distract people from the learning environment? Um, what all what all will this change? with our institutions. The survey will be sent out as its own email in the next few days. It will be entirely confidential and voluntary. For GTV, I'm Trey Brown.
Officials say Pittsburgh State will continue to keep everyone abreast of campus changes due to the statewide law adjustment on their website and through media releases. The Lebec Community College Board of Trustees announced the school will eliminate three programs from the school's curriculum. At its regular meeting on October 8th, the board said LCC will no longer offer associate's degrees in network administration, financial services, or music. The public information officer at LCC said many factors contributed to the lower student demand in the programs, including changes in the curriculum from the Kansas Board of Regents and difficulty transferring the credits to other schools. Instructors from the CUT programs will continue to teach at the school even after the programs have been canceled. Coming up, students participate in the Gridiron Game. Plus, a famous orchestra comes to McCray Hall. Stay with us. Are you afraid that your child might have dyslexia or a reading difficulty? If so, you're not alone. One in five children experience reading failure. Your child might have dyslexia or a reading difficulty if he or she sounds out the first part of a word and guesses the rest of it, avoids reading, is falling behind his or her class in reading, or hates to read out loud. We know how much parents and teachers worry about their children and students who are experiencing reading difficulty. Complete the online assessment with your child at readingscreening.org. October 15th, the Bicknell Center is hosting the season opening Southeast Kansas Symphony Concert. The opening night concert will include Beethoven's Egmont Overture, Rayfield Pavane's For a Dead Princess, Brian Sadler's Action Fanfare, finishing the evening featuring Cuban American pianist Amanda Varelis, performing Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto. Number two, two former conductors of the symphony, Dr. Corlin Martin and Professor Stella Hastings, will be welcomed back for the concert. The event starts at 7.30 p.m. and ticket prices range from $5 to $9. Over the last month, Pittsburgh State students have been participating in a popular intramural sport. Emily Flores has more. It's a good day for some football. Flag football, anyway. The annual flag football tournament has begun and the competition is fierce. Every fall semester, Pittsburgh State University hosts a flag football intramurals between organizations. Uh, my name is Parker Wellborn. I'm with Sigma Phi Epsilon, and we're out here at the uh, President's Field uh, watching the Sigma Chi versus uh, uh, Sigma Phi Epsilon football <laughs> game. Sig Eb and Sig Chi were out there today competing for the semifinals. You know, uh, this is a rematch against Sig Chi. Sig Eb is uh, kicking butt today. Um, you know, we've, it, we've had really good plays offensively, defensively. We've had some good snags on the flags. Um, we're just out here to win and have a good time, and so far we're doing all of that. So, uh, recruitment Sig Eb, 2K15. These organizations are competing for the prize of intramural championship t-shirts. For Caps 13 News, I'm Emily Flores. The Pittsburgh State Flag Football Intramural Championship will be held Thursday night, October 15th, at Carney Smith Stadium. A world-famous orchestra is coming to Pittsburgh tomorrow night. They are called the Chamber Orchestra Kremlin. Originating from Russia, they have played over 1,800 concerts in over 24 countries. They have performed in Pittsburgh before, the last time being in 2010. 
Tickets for this event are available at the ticket office. The tickets are $12 for the general public, $8 for seniors and children under 18, and Pitt State students get tickets free of charge. The concert will be held at McCray Hall at 7.30 tomorrow night. On October 1st, Pitt, Pitt State hosted their annual Yell Like Hell contest. GTV's Trevor Clark recaps the excitement. It's that time of the year again. Time to fill Carnegie's in the stadium for a Pitt State event unrelated to football. Yell Like Hell is back. Pitt State students and Pittsburgh citizens flood the stadium in hopes for a good seat for the most exciting homecoming event. All the fall sports programs give introductions to the coaching staff and team captains. They reintroduce the student body homecoming king and queen, Ryan Schulteis and Ellie Stewart. Spencer McClung shares more information regarding Yell Like Hell. Yell Like Hell is a cheer and dance competition between Greek Life and other clubs on campus. There are three different divisions that compete, men's, women's, and co-ed. Each team is only allowed a maximum of 25 participants, and participants are not allowed to lift the others above their head. Doing this results in a deduction of points. The grading scale is based on how clean the routine is and the crowd interaction. This year had a great turnout and even better competition. Sigma Phi Epsilon and Sigma 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 won Yell Like Hell last year and looked to repeat, but the other groups would like to think differently. Edgar Putin talks about his preparation for Yell Like Hell. How important it is to our fraternity. We've been practicing since late August. And it was almost an everyday thing. We just had weekends off. Long practices, but grind it out. After the judges tallied their scores, a repeat was not on the agenda, as Sigma Chi ended up taking first in the men's division, and Alpha Gamma Delta surprised everyone by doing the same. They have a year's worth of bragging rights, but even more pressure as they look to repeat next year. Coming up next, we'll show you a glimpse into the life of our homecoming king. And a new sports medicine center will be appearing on campus. We'll be right back. Students have spoken and the university has answered. Pittsburgh State is the first four-year region institution in Kansas to go completely tobacco-free. As we've done in the past, faculty, staff, and students have partnered together to better our campus with new initiatives and traditions. So do the gorilla thing. Keep our campus a healthy, sustainable, and respectful place for all. Visit www.pittstate.edu slash tobacco-free for more info. for me to get here. Why would I mess it up by drinking and driving? Welcome back. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to win the title of homecoming king or queen? Caps 13 Alexis Frank has more. You might recognize senior Ryan Schultes' face when you see him on campus. Throughout his four years of schooling at Pitt State, Ryan has been a very active student. His good friend, Austin Cassie, can vouch for him. Ryan Schultes and I have been friends for four years now. He's always been a very active member of the student body. You know, typical day, I go to class during the day, and then in the evening I usually have meetings uh, for various organizations and clubs that I'm in. I'm very involved in my fraternity, Sigma Phi Epsilon, and also with Advancement Ambassadors. Ryan's busy schedule became even more hectic when he was selected for homecoming court. Then, even busier when he won the title of king. Ryan had to participate in several interviews and make many appearances. Well, it was really busy and I had like a set schedule of different activities I had to go to as well as other things that I had planned that weekend. 
Although it is clear Ryan is a student who pushes himself in many aspects of his life, Ryan insists that he is just like every other student on Pittsburgh State University's campus. Ryan is a business management major, and like most students at Pittsburgh State, Ryan makes sure to make his academics his number one top priority while attending PSU. And although he greatly enjoys participating in other organizations like Sigma Phi Epsilon and Advancement Ambassadors, they come second to his education. It was a blast. I had a lot of fun. And day to day, I'm just the average guy, goes to class, has a few meetings, but I really enjoyed the week and it was a great experience I'll never forget. Ryan looks forward to graduating in the spring of 2016 and beginning his journey to launching his future career. I'm sure on top of his excellent grades, in-depth involvement on campus, and Homecoming King 2015 title, Ryan is going to have one impressive resume for his employers. For CAPS 13 News, I'm Alexis Frank. Student athletes now have an upgraded experience in sports medicine. CAPS 13 Serena Fierney has a story. Freeman Health System has teamed up with PSU Athletics to bring student athletes the new sports medicine center. The completely new and upgraded center opened at the beginning of the school year in August and is located in the Weed Gymnasium. We spoke with the assistant athletic trainer, Kevin Calm, about the upgrades. Um, there's been a lot of changes lately here in the athletic department. We've got a brand new athletic training room. Um, it's about 40% bigger than what we had before. Um, everything is new in here. I mean, our, our tra treatment tables are new, our taping tables are new, all our rehab equipment is new. We're about to get some new um, hydrotherapy tubs that are really going to be bigger. Um, right now we have two 110-gallon tanks. We're going to have a 600-gallon tank and a 400-gallon tank. So it's going to be able to service a lot more athletes at one time, which is going to be a lot more efficient for us. We asked Calm what the benefits were of having the new plaster center just down the hall. Well, in terms of um, making it easier for athletic training, what's been a lot better is now we have an indoor facility, so it's not only good for the football team, the track team, and all the other athletic teams, but when we're trying to get a kid back into rehab and we need to run them instead of going outside in the rain or the cold, or even when kids are doing rehab, you really don't want to be on a hard basketball court, now we have that indoor turf that we can use um, for our, our purposes as well in terms of rehab. Reporting for CAPS 13 News, I'm Serena Fernie. Coming up from sports, the volleyball team takes on the Central Oklahoma Broncos. Plus, the PSU football team travels to Emporia. Austin Greco is back with your CAPS 13 sports update after the break.
Welcome back with your Caps 13 Sports Update. I'm Austin Greco. The night after gaining their first win of the season, the Pitt State volleyball team took on the University of Central Oklahoma at John Lance Arena. In front of a home crowd, town crowd, the Broncos took an early 13-9 lead on the Gorillas, but PSU stayed on their heels. On game point on set one, the Broncos put the ball right where it needed to be. Moving on to game two, UCO jumped out to a 13-7 lead on the Gorillas, but freshman Taylor Unk came up big with the block for Pitt State. The Broncos then climbed to a 21-16 lead, but PSU not giving up with the perfect spike from freshman Noel Dooley. UCO then went on to take game two as well with the air from Taylor Wright. Game three proved to be a close contest with the score even at six. But the front row of this Bronco squad proved to have other plans. Senior Barbara Jackson and freshman Jordan Spence led all players with a combined 23 kills as UCO beat the Gorillas in three sets. Pitt State will play at home this Friday against Nebraska Kearney at 7 p.m. This week, the PSU football team traveled to Emporia, Kansas to take on the 18th ranked Hornets. Three minutes into the first quarter, John Roderick Jr. found his wide open tight end Kyle Swartz for the first quarter of the contest. Pitt State up 14-0, Emporia snaps directly to running back Antonio Brown for the Hornets' first touchdown with five minutes to go in the first. Roderick Jr. in shotgun formation, Marquise Cushion in motion, takes the handoff and passes to a wide open Jeff Seaborg for the 33-yard touchdown. Pitt State up 21-7 with nine minutes to go in the first half. Quarterback Brent Wilson steps back and hits the wide receiver Kowalski Irvin for the score 21-13 Pitt State. The next Hornet possession, same play, different receiver. Wilson hits Mitchell Foot for the touchdown despite the defensive interference. Two minutes left in the first half, Roderick Jr. has some time, finds Levi Copeland in the end zone for the 30-yard score. Under five minutes to go, Wilson in shotgun formation finds Jordan Reed for the 56-yard touchdown to put ECU up 32-28. Two minutes to go in the third, Roderick Jr. hands off to Jeff Siebel for the third Pitt State score. PSU up 35-32, Brent Wilson takes it to the house Wilson to put the Hornets up 39-35. Emporia would get the ball back with eight to go in the fourth. Brent Wilson would mishandle the snap and that would lead to a safety for the PSU defense. Pitt State down four, Roderick Jr. will take it himself to put the Gorillas up by three after the extra point. Next possession, Wilson to his receiver Irving again to put the Hornets back on top. Last chance for Pitt State, fourth and 10, and Roderick Jr. overthrows his receiver and the Gorilla football team would take their second loss of the season to Emporia State. The Kansas City Royals are going back to the American League Championship Series after defeating the overrated Houston Astros last night 7-2. The Royals were led by a dominating outing from the electric Johnny Cueto as he went eight beautiful innings only allowing two hits. Coming up next for the Royals will be the Josh Donaldson-led Toronto Blue Jays as the only two teams left in the American League will square off tonight at 6.30. Edison Volquez will take the mound for KC as they look to take the 1-0 series lead. Athletes and students alike have noticed the pool closure at the Wee Gymnasium this fall. The pool at the Wee Gymnasium has been closed due to renovations since May 8th. We sit down with Director of Campus Recreation Vince Dano to fill us in on why the renovations were made. Oh, no, the reason we did the work is because the pool was built in 1971 and it's, it's never had any maintenance done to it since. So uh, basically, people that have used the pool have known that it's been, the paint has been peeling off the ceiling, there wasn't any air movement in here. It was just, um, it was kind of just an older, you know, pool that didn't have any modern upgrades to it. The renovations have not gone as scheduled for the pool, though, and we asked Vince, when will the pool be open? We're shooting for the middle of next week, uh, again, so if, if everything goes correctly and we can get all of the um, little minor things taken care of. That does it for your Caps 13 Sports Update. Coming up next, we'll look into how the fitness routine of Pittsburgh State's Princeton and Gold Dance Team. Stick around. We have more Caps 13 news after the break. Did you know that a wish granted gives a child and their family a chance to feel normal, stress-free, and may improve their condition? Did you know it costs an average of $7,500 to grant one child's wish? Did you know that in 2012, Make-A-Wish granted the wishes of 14,000 children with life-threatening illnesses? Did you know that every 28 minutes, a child is referred to Make-A-Wish? Did, Did you, you know? know? 
your gorilla athletes want to make just one of those wishes come true? I'm Dylan Dolly, Make-A-Wish Chair for the Pittsburgh State Student Athletic Advisory Committee. This year, Gorilla Student Athletes have set a goal to raise $8,000 for Make-A-Wish to hold a wish granting ceremony for a local kid right here at Pittsburgh State. Visit PittStateGorillas.com and click on the Make-A-Wish logo to donate. It is a secure donation site and every little bit will help us reach our goal. Thank you for sharing the power of a wish. Welcome back to CAPS 13 News. We close tonight's show with our recurring fitness segment. This week, we take a look at how Pittsburgh State's Crimson and Gold dance team works at staying fit. Emily Flores has more. The Crimson and Gold dancers are as fit as the athletes that play in the home football and basketball games they perform for. To stay in shape, they get in cardio workouts by running, improve flexibility by doing stretches, and put it all together with choreography and dance. Co-captain Tori Colvin shares the secret to her success for staying in shape. My name is Tori Colvin and I'm one of the three uh, captains of the Crimson and Gold Dance Team. What I do when I eat at home is I try to eat as healthy as possible. I have a hamburger sometimes, but, <laughs> but my favorite thing to do is like a snack on carrots. And everybody pretty much eats really healthy. So. And the Crimson and Gold Dancers under the direction of Shelly Grimes. The dance team also has to stay fit for special performances at events like Convocation, Yell Like Hell, and for competitions. I'm Gracie Spencer. I'm a junior. I'm a captain this year. My major is communications with an emphasis in broadcasting. Here we start out running every day at practice, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays are our actual workout days, and we do anything from just regular high-intensity aerobics to step aerobics to Zumba, to things with yoga balls, jump rope, um, literally we just do a whole bunch of things. We're getting into lifting in a couple weeks, I think, but we haven't tried it. We go running before every single practice. We run up to a mile or two miles every single day. On Tuesday, Thursdays, we either do fitness, we do aerobics, or we do um, stair steps, and we go the full 45 minutes of cardio, sometimes 50 minutes, depends how what mood she's in. Who Tori is referring to is Shelly Grimes, the director of the dance team. She is instrumental in creating fitness regimes and choreography that keep all of the dancers moving, keep them in shape, and give them the endurance they need for a physical, demanding activity. With fitness for CAPS 13, I'm Emily Flores. You can catch a performance by the Crimson Gold Dancers Thursday night, October 15th, at the Bicknell Family Performing Arts Center. Those girls always put on a really good show. Yeah. That does it for this week's edition of CAPS 13 News. For more archived episodes, visit the Pittsburgh State website and search for broadcasting. Also, visit us on Twitter at CAPS13 underscore. Stay tuned to CAPS13 for more great programs. Activities Board were the event planning group on campus. We used to be Student Activities Council. The Grill Activities Board seeks to plan as many student-friendly events on campus as possible. Besides the name and logo change, the Grill Activities Board also has a brand new office located on the first floor of the Overman Student Center. A few events the Grill Activities Board was responsible for includes movie nights, guest speakers, and bringing in hypnotists to campus. 
All of these events are free to PSU students with a Gorilla Card. They are extremely convenient as these events are all on Pittsburgh State Campus. Come check them out. After all, they have a ball pit and usually have free food. For additional information and event planning, you can follow them on Twitter at PittStateGAB 